Have you ever been to the situation when you work on a website and it's very fragile? When you fix something and two new issues appear? When some of these tests fail and you need to spend extra time to figure out why? When those tests don't even catch certain type of issues like visual degradation due to CSS bug? Today's video is about better testing approach. We're gonna test UI components by creating stories with Storybook. Before we go all technical, Let's discuss it as a concept. Imagine a brick. Can you test it? Of course. In fact, most likely this brick came from the factory where some form of quality control is implemented. I hope. <laughs> they normally will be doing random sampling to check that the brick has right size or dimensions, mechanical properties like no cracks, resistance to compressions, resistance to bending, thermal properties, water absorption rate, right color, and some others. Now imagine a wall. Ultimately the wall is just a collection of the bricks glued together. The wall usually being built on site and also needs some testing. Is the pattern right? Did we mix the cement correctly? Does the wall have right dimensions? Did we put the right amount of cement between the bricks? Is the wall vertical? Etc. But it much less worries for the people who are actually building the wall because they know that they are using the quality materials that have already been tested. You don't need to check those bricks anymore. You can just use them. Your only worry now is the properties of the wall. Now, think about the whole building. You got it. It is a simplification, but more or less building just consists of multiple walls, floors and windows all joined together. So you will not need to test these walls or bricks. You will need to test the integration of the walls. At this point, you probably wonder, well, this is cool, but how do I actually apply it to my daily job? How do I test my website? This is when you start using Storybook. This is a tool that allows you to do some testing for all your bricks, isolated UI components, then some of the walls, a bigger components, and also the buildings, pages of your website. Enough talking, I want to see it. Starting is very easy. If you don't have a project and just want to play with it, you need to initialize a new NPM package, then create a demo app in the framework of your choice. I chose React. Navigate to the subfolder and then run the npx storybook init command. And wait. Now I can run the storybook script and voila! Let's look at our stories. Even by default, Storybook has enough stories to map it to our bricks and walls analogy. We have button stories, primary button, secondary button, large and small. Those are the bricks, the lowest level components. We also have a header, and this is an example of a wall, many bricks put together. You can see the button is in use, there is a little text and a little picture. And we have a page. Page is an example of a building. It's a multiple components put in together. You see that I have buttons, I have a header, and I have the whole page. One of the questions that probably goes through your head right now is, how do I decide how many stories do I need? To answer that, I'm going to use magic and speed up time to build more components. Now, magically, we have a few more components and some stories created for them. Here I have an example of a blog post in a different state. So I have a plain blog post with a title and a text. I have a blog post with a very long title, with a very long text, with picture and with picture in the long text. Here I have an example of a multiple blog post put together. And here I put the multiple blog post in a page with a header, main blog post page and the footer. So how did they decide what to do with the limited time that I had? In short, I followed the approach of evaluating risk and increasing test coverage where risk is higher. For example, I know that the footer is very unlikely to change. So I have only one story for the footer, but uh, this component is very different. The content here is variable. Title could change, text could change picture might exist or not exist, be different size, type, dimension. This is way more risky. We need to check for all of these different options. That's why I have multiple stories to test different states of this component. You could also notice that the page containing multiple blog posts still kind of looks inconsistent because I can see that when the image is in the landscape mode, the text is not quite aligned with this text 
and I don't know if it's a bug or not, but I need to probably spend more time to, to add more stories for a different picture size or orientations. Some ideas to help you when you'll be doing your testing. Number one is ask, but what if? What if something unusual happens? This can be a ridiculous edge case, or something more reasonable, like picture being in the landscape mode or portrait mode. Number two, don't try to do it in one go. Use iterative approach. You could see that I just found a new area to test right now while integrating components into one page. Nobody is perfect, it's okay to miss things, but you need to fix and generate new test ideas once you discover those things. Now it is time to talk about testing options and how are they fitting into the development lifecycle. The simplest way is just to manually click each of the stories and see if they look right. This could work for a very, very tiny project, but it will quickly become unsustainable as the project grows. We need test automation. Conveniently, there are some options. Let's start with the easiest option using a built-in test runner. To do it, you need to add it as a dev dependency. Then you just need to add the test storybook script to your package JSON and point to the location where your storybook runs and then you can run it. All my test is passing and uh, you can see the results here. This tool is free to use and uses Jest and Playwright under the hood. It checks that each story could render. This is useful, but maybe I would add it as a pre-commit hook. Is it enough to give us a full confidence about our UI? Not quite. So you need to have options of doing more advanced tests and Chromatic comes to the rescue. Chromatic is a solution recommended by Storybook people itself. It runs in the cloud across multiple browsers and will perform a visual testing of your components. What does visual mean? Well, it's render, make a screenshot, compare with a baseline image. This tool is super easy to get started with. It has a free tier that could be enough for a smaller project. All you need to do is create a Chromatic account, create a project, copy the project token, add Chromatic as a dependency to your project, add package.json script and run it. But this video is not about Chromatic, so I'm not going to go into the details. Last option that might be useful sometimes is using UI test framework of your choice to test your stories. It will require writing some code. Yes, it will give you more flexibility like ability to click around, type in through the inputs, etc. And maybe security, your stories will never leave your code base. But it will bring a maintenance cost, bugs, possible fragility. So I would only consider this as a last resort option when for whatever reason, money, security, bureaucracy, you couldn't use tool like Chromatic. To sum it up, using Storybook as a tool will not be enough. You need to change the way you think. You have to start thinking about moving your test towards the foundation of the test pyramid. Remember that checking all of the bricks will lead to less testing for the walls that will lead to less testing for the buildings. If you are interested in testing, check out my other video and see you next time.